Gross. Academia. Oh, what happened? Did you hear what happened? Sucrose, we're here. Oh, traveler, Paimon. I only just arrived myself, so I'm still getting ready. Oh, and Kale just passed by a moment ago. She said she had some things to sort out at the inn where she's staying, but she'll meet up with us when she's done. Apparently, Tainari and Sino both went out, but she stayed behind because she wanted to help us. Not too bad. After reviewing it again with fresh eyes, I came up with a new theory which seems to hold some water. I'll attempt to explain it as simply as I can. I believe that each of the four things in the prophecy refers to a different field of knowledge. So, in a way, the prophecy is a test of the reader's intelligence. But it's unlikely for any one person to have expertise in all these different areas. So I suggest that we seek out one expert from each and get their opinion. Also, in two out of the four areas, the prophecy seems to want us to find specific people. It may even turn out that the people themselves are the answers. Hmm. So it sounds like we should put our heads together and list out the people who can help us. Exactly. I think we can go through each riddle in turn, and generate four groups of names to match the four questions. Alright, then let's start from group one! The first riddle was... A flower that is not of this world. Personally, I would still go with Albedo for this one. Alchemy is the most likely to have to do with otherworldly things, and he is by far the leading expert in this regard. Exactly! You're the creator of the Tetratanic Sweet Flower! Who knows? Maybe that's the flower we're looking for! Huh? You really think so? <laughs> oh, but what about Tainari? He's a forest watcher and knows all about plants. If it's a flower we're looking for, maybe he's the man for the job. Alright, I'll add him to the list as well. On to group two. This subject is... A guide who will never get lost. Hmm, that's kind of abstract. Hmm, does it just mean someone who never loses their way? Wait, but they have to be able to guide others too. So it's not quite as simple as that. Oh, you mean Mona? Yeah, she definitely count! Mona. Yes, she certainly seems very confident. And she can use her astrology to guide people. Would Bennett count? Well, his luck's so bad that as long as you go in the opposite direction from him, you'll always be going the right way, right? Hmm, I see. I, I suppose I can't argue with that logic. Add him to the list! Finding everyone won't take long, so one extra person won't hurt. <sighs> I know. Would Outrider Amber be a valid candidate for this category as well? Yeah, she would! She's got a great sense of direction after all. As a matter of fact, when the Traveler and Paimon first came to Mondstadt, she was actually the one who gave us directions! Yes, she's certainly a good guide. Is there anyone else? <sighs> Let me think. Ah, yes, I believe there may be one more. Albedo once made a set of equipment for Mika from the Reconnaissance Company. He's their surveyor, and an exceptional pathfinder. He's even instructed others in the discipline of surveying before. So, in my view, he's highly unlikely to lose his way, and would be very good at helping others find theirs. Cool! Another one for our list! Wait... Kale should have been here by now. Wonder what's taking her so long. M sorry, could we continue our chat somewhere else? Oh, you wanna go see how she's doing, right? Sure, let's all go! intruding or anything. Is everything okay? Uh, Sucrose! I, uh... I was 
preparing some stuff. Is it time already? Oh no, I... I'm sorry. Don't worry. The Traveler and I only just met up. We were just worried that you might get lost along the way, so we thought that we'd come get you. Thank you. I'm ready to join you now. Um... How's that thing going? So let's pick up where we left off. Next up is the third line. One who would never lie. Hmm. Anyone spring to mind? Uh, you really think so? Seems like it would be pretty difficult for someone in his position to avoid having to lie. Then what about Kaya? He's the cavalry captain and a rather popular figure, but... You think there's something fishy about him too, huh? Yeah, he's definitely a sneaky one. Bet he lies all the time! Hmm... I can't help but agree with you there. There's the tone-deaf bard! Ugh. But on second thought, he wouldn't qualify either. He talks way too much nonsense. Hmm... Is there anyone else for pissing? Acting Grandmaster Jean? She has a good name in that regard. But from what I know, she sometimes covers up the truth out of concern for those around her. For example, when Lisa loses track of time in the library and misses her patrol shift, Jean will come up with some excuse, like Lisa's ill today. Also, she sometimes makes up stories to get Clea to behave, like the one about the big monster that comes to catch naughty kids who don't go to bed on time. Do you think that rules her out? White lies are still lies, but do we really have to reject her because of some harmless fibs? It's not like she had evil intentions. No, we're the ones being strict. Rosaria doesn't strike me as the type of person to lie. Oh, Kali, you probably haven't met her yet, have you? She's a sister from the church who looks, um, a little scary and not very sociable. She stopped by the alchemy bench once, a long time ago, and asked me about Albedo. I thought maybe she was trying to find him, for work or something. But when I asked, she just said that she was curious about him because he was so intelligent, and wanted to talk to his assistant to find out what he was like. A lot of people might have given a more tactful justification, but I could see in her face that she wasn't trying to hide anything. She was just very direct and straightforward. That's why I don't think of her as the lying type. Rosaria doesn't look like the sort of person you'd want to get into a fight with. Maybe she just fights her way out of situations that some people might lie to get out of. I can definitely see that. I've also heard the other sisters say that Rosaria doesn't even make excuses when she skips choir. She just doesn't show up. She's a tough cookie, huh? Let's put her name down. In that case, I think Sino fits in this list, too. Ah, true. Lion's probably more trouble than it's worth for someone like him. Kinda like with Rosaria. Oh, and Paimon also nominates Razor. Bet he couldn't lie to save his life. I've also got someone else in mind. Noelle, the trainee knight. She's a very honest person. I don't think she'd tell a lie. Alrighty, write her name down, too. Wait. There's one more person. You know, our long-standing staffer at the alchemy bench. Huh? You mean Timaeus? Yes, him. Um, truth be told, he's been love-struck recently. He swore that he wouldn't say a dishonest word or slack off until he succeeds in getting the woman he loves. Timaeus has a crush? Yes, that's right. Well, who is it? Do you know her? I've never met her. All I know is that she's from Liyue. Timaeus says that she's fun, has a great personality, and is very, very good looking. Since we're on the topic, helping Timaeus win the lady of his dreams was also one of my goals for this Windbloom Festival. But how can we help with that? I don't know. Make sure he uses nice paper and a fancy envelope when he sends letters to her. Help him pick a nice gift and wrap it properly. That sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah! I had the same situation.
situation once in the Avidia Forest. I helped another forest ranger out by delivering a love letter to the co-worker she likes. <sighs> yep, that sort of thing exactly. Oh, also, I helped him with some of the groundwork for one of his research projects. He must have appreciated it, because he gave me a refrigeration device that he's been developing as a thank you gift. Is it any good? Um... I mean... It looks nice. <laughs> Sounds like a no. Hmm. Alright. Guess we'll put Loverboy down on the list then. Okay. So, last of all, we have... A legend that never ends. Anyone come to mind for this particular line? Lisa, perhaps? A librarian understands books best, and aren't most legends written down somewhere? When I think about legends, fairy tales and picture books come to mind. Maybe Kale! She read a lot of fairy tales when Tainari was teaching her to read. Oh, do I count? Of course you do. I'll put you on the list. I prefer to read things like an illustrated analysis of alchemical substances and their uses, the fascinating principles of crafting, and hypotheses of life. Ah, uh, point taken. Paimon didn't quite understand any of those. Hmm. Clay might be a good choice. Her mother, Alice, is a renowned traveling author, so I'll bet she's been exposed to all sorts of myths and legends. Alright then, Klee makes the short list. Well, that should just about do it. Next up, we should go and ask the people on the list about the prophecy. Do we have to ask absolutely everyone on the list? It seems like a lot of people. It is. So, I was thinking that perhaps we should split up? That might make our search more effective. Okie dokie. Also, I thought of a method of gathering feedback. No problem! We can do that! You and the Traveler are practically joined at the hip, so you two can go together. I'll pair up with Kale. Capable Kale and sensible Sucrose! Sounds like a winning combination! Okay, I promise I'll help. Capable Kale! Yeah, I got this! Rest assured that the unbeatable Traveler and Paimon will do our part too! Off we go! Plan on starting from the person with the most defined stronghold. So let's go to the library. Lisa should be there. Stronghold? That's an. uh. interesting word to use. Um. maybe. den? No, that's even worse. How about. layer? Here we are, Lisa Slayer. Oh no, that was a bad word choice. Now Sucrose is using it, it's all my fault. Lisa, might I ask if... Huh? Sucrose? Kale, what are you doing here? I can only sucrose that they were Kale-ing on someone. At least uh, that's as far as I know. Oh, please, just stop it with these puns. I beg you! Are you trying to win worldwide fame for unfunny jokes? Um, is Lisa not here at the moment? Surprising, isn't it? 
she went out. I'm afraid it's just us here looking for information. Except me. I'm not here for information. Like you, I came here for an abortive search for the librarian, who is also my academia senior. Oh, so you studied in the same darshan as Lisa? That's right. Her mentor in Sumeru was also my benefactor. We were both Spontamod students. Wow, that's cool. But wait, we're getting sidetracked. We came here to look for some information. Kale and I are investigating a prophecy. And we were hoping you all might be able to help. Oh? What sort of prophecy? Hmm, I see. You want to ask them about the flower that is not of this world, and me about the one who would never lie. But there's no rush! You don't need to answer right away. We're just here to tell you about the situation. You can take your time to think it over and submit any thoughts you have in written form to the Sucrose mailbox. The Sucrose mailbox? <sighs> yep. I was thinking about it on the way. And although they seem like trick questions, there's a lot to mull over once you get down to the details. A quick answer off the top of your head might not go into enough depth. So, I decided to place a mailbox next to the alchemy crafting table. Everyone can submit their written answers there when they're ready. We don't have to call it the Sucrose mailbox, though. It could just as well be called the Sucrose and Kali mailbox. Or... Even the Sucrose, Kale, Traveler, and Paimon mailbox. <laughs> I think in this case, we can just go with your quick answer off the top of your head. Sounds like a good solution. Certainly more reliable than verbal discussion alone. Agreed. Certainly when it comes to discerning whether someone is a liar or not, you cannot simply take them at their word. Understood. Once we've had a look into it, We'll place our replies into your mailbox. Thank you all so much. Okay, let's take them off the list and carry on working our way down. Mm-hmm. Already done. I'm pleasantly surprised to see those two introverts getting along so well. Do you get the feeling that Kale's return to Mondstadt has emboldened her more contrarian side? Yes, I'd noticed that too. Traveling and meeting old friends are both good for the body and soul. And isn't rediscovering one's youth while revisiting old haunts a worthwhile pursuit? When I first met Kale, she'd never known happiness or youth. But things are different now. Her Elazar being cured was a huge milestone in her life. Kale is a very sensitive and introverted child. I'm sure you must have noticed that too, Albedo. From the time she's been in my care, I've observed that she's actually a very lively character by nature. But she had a very rough start in life, and it changed her. So, might I assume that your respective claims of looking for plants and artists in Mondstadt were just... pretexts? I wouldn't say that. Both Kale and Genius Invocation TCG are very important to me. Would it really kill you to just say yes in this situation? Fine. Yes. We came out of concern for Kale. She's been back to Mondstadt of her own accord several times, but it has led to no significant improvement in her mood. Well, it won't hurt to give her some more time. I believe that Sucrose might be able to help her. Sounds like an extension of your own self-confidence as her teacher. You could say that. In a similar vein, I've heard that Sumeru scholars often build their social relationships based on their academic ones. Is that true? I suppose it might look like that from your perspective. Sumeru society is something of a special case. The reason it is known as the City of Learning is because all of its resources are in some way linked to academia. As such, academic resources equate to social capital. It is not unheard of, for example, for people to build a family in order to pursue further studies. But the relationship between the three of us is not an academic one turned social. We've never even worked on a paper together for starters. Oh, so the academic paper is the nexus of the academic family. Hmm, interesting. I would think of us more as siblings. 
an equal and pure relationship, unaffected by academic considerations. As much as I'd prefer not to admit it, that statement is not inaccurate. I can understand that position. I have a younger sister myself, and it's only natural for me to be protective of her. What you describe fits the idea of a city of learning, as I imagine it. The family is where all social relationships intersect. As such, a family founded on common goals may actually be more stable. By the way, who's the eldest between you? Let's not go down this rabbit hole, please. In terms of age, I'm the eldest, of course. He just doesn't want to admit it. But your mental age is younger than that. I dare say even by enough to be the youngest sibling. Perhaps I could bring Kale into this happy family to be your elder sister. No. You will never see me admit to being the youngest sibling. Except perhaps as a last-ditch effort to turn the tables in a game of cards. Them. Now then, where should we go first? Let's try our luck at the bulletin board, shall we? A lot of people tend to show up there at some point in the day. Maybe we'll get lucky. Traveler and Paimon, it's been a while. How have you been? 